I am not one to stray away from criticism of Colorado quarterback Shadur Sanders. I mean, how many times did Riley get touched? So what? How many times did Riley get touched? This season so far, he's still getting massive love from the mainstream media and a lot of college football fans, and generally, I just can't agree with them. I can't get behind his personality, and we aren't even talking about his play. But let's be unbiased for a moment. In this video, I'm going to dive into Sanders and determine if he really deserves the hype. If you're new, subscribe to the channel as I will be doing draft content all year long. But for now, I'm Chase Keller, and welcome to Shadur Sanders, NFL caliber quarterback. Enjoy. In this video, I'm going to go over his 2023 campaign and briefly discuss his 2024 season as I don't have all 22 film access to those games yet. But before I dive into those games, Here's a little background on Shadur, just in case you're living under a rock. Shadur Sanders is the son of legendary NFL cornerback Deion Sanders. He's played under his dad since his high school days, where he was a consensus four-star recruit out of Trinity Christian School. Initially, Sanders committed to play at Florida Atlantic, but once his father decided to be the head coach at Jackson State, Shador didn't hesitate to follow. In his two years at Jackson State, where he was the starter for both years, he passed for over 7,000 yards on top of 70 touchdowns and 14 interceptions. After his sophomore year, Coach Prime decided to take over as the head coach at Colorado. And again, with no hesitation, Shadur followed him. And since joining Colorado, he's become debatably the most controversial college football player here in the US. His statistics look pretty sharp, and during his junior season, he passed for 2,300 yards, 27 touchdowns, and only three interceptions. But the team went 4-8, which isn't bad knowing that Colorado went 1-11 the season prior, but because of all the attention they got, they were a Pac-12 conference contender to some. But again, we have to recognize that going 4-8 after the team went 1-11 before is pretty impressive nonetheless. But all of the losses allowed for him to get more media attention. And so far in 2024, you know what? You tell me if he has deserved it so far. The Buffaloes are 2-1, and, and Shadur's passing stats include 999 passing yards, 9 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions. There's still a lot more to come, but as we speak, Shadur is projected to be a top 10 pick pretty much everywhere right now. And I hate to say it, but I disagree. Nonetheless, the potential is absolutely there and I will not disregard that. So let's dive into the film. People forget that the Buffaloes were nationally ranked at one point. I kind of blame the polls, but at the same time, they did beat a nationally ranked TCU team who ended up being mediocre anyways. But outside of that, this video will have a positive and hot start for Shadur, as in his first game as a Buffalo, he passed for 510 yards and 4 touchdowns, which is just unbelievable might I add. No picks and his best single game passer rating of that 2023 Colorado season. So understandably, getting off to that super hot start is going to allow for him to get a lot of attention, and understandably so, he did pretty much deserve it to begin the year. But the hype kind of fell off, but if you only watched this TCU game, you would think this guy would be the first overall pick. So let's specifically talk about what he did really well in this game. I was particularly impressed by his ability to make awkward throws in this one, and I had to group all awkward throws together because there's not one that stood out more than the other. Like on this play, he's able to make the delivery while being hit. 
Incoming delayed blitz on the inside, and Shadur recognizes it but doesn't panic. His receiver is coming inside with tight-ish coverage on him, but there's enough room for a ball to be delivered, so he perfectly times this throw while being hit and delivers it perfectly to the inside receiver. And then on this play, he's able to make a throw on the run. Another spread look during the same two-minute drill as the last play, and Sanders gets some solid pressure coming in. He takes off running to the right with a guy open that he kind of missed, but he also had Hunter going deep. With Travis Hunter on the outside, he delivers a very good back shoulder throw that Hunter is able to haul in here. And then even on this one, he drops back and nearly gets sacked, but he uses his explosiveness to evade it and get out running. With pressure in his face even after the evasion, he stops on a dime and finds his receiver after plenty of time to make a play. Some great plays here, but there were more great plays that he made. I mean, it would be pretty impressive if he passed for over 500 yards and was unable to make a great play. But I thought this game also flashed a very good amount of poise, which I didn't grade his poise ridiculously high, but if I was only going off of this game, I would have graded it at an A+. He looked extremely strong under pressure in this matchup, making throws while being hit as already shown, standing strong in the pocket to make deliveries, stepping up to make a play, he had it all in this one. My biggest critique of Shadur is that he takes way too many unnecessary sacks, which I'll dive into more later, but he was able to evade sacks better than usual in this one, and this time he escapes pretty well. There aren't a lot of negatives to discuss here, but I mean the pocket presence was still a little bit iffy. As I did say, it was better in this one, but better doesn't mean it's great or anything. Like on this play where he escapes a blitz and extends the play instead of letting it get blown up. But as more pressure came in, instead of continuing his run outside, he cut back into the action and took the sack. The decision making here was just really awkward. But wait, this stuff gets worse, but I'll discuss that later. Overall, this game was a very nice introduction to Shadur and his play. I know he struggled last season in some games, and I know I'm not a huge fan of him already, but this game showed a lot of potential and a lot of promise for years to come. Now we move on to Oregon, which was a very interesting game to say the least. Colorado continued to receive more hype after their 3-0 start, but then they ran into number 10 ranked Oregon. This game was a complete dud from the Buffaloes team as a whole, and they eventually lost this one 42-6. Shadur could not avoid the bad play pandemic here, as he completed 23 passes on 33 attempts for 159 yards and a touchdown, along with 10 rushes for negative 34 yards. And if you asked me, this was where the excuses started rolling in for Shadur about he's fine, his O-line is not good. And yes, while his offensive line play was subpar in 2023, that doesn't give him the excuse to apparently play like a top 5 pick because he did not play like that in this one. I think that was on full display here against Oregon. The first of 7 losses that Colorado had with Shadur Sanders as the starting quarterback. Up against Oregon, Shadur had several struggles that we had not seen up to this point in the season. What had been seen was the pocket presence issue, and his escapability still needed tooling only because he needs to stop taking unavoidable sacks. But we already know this issue, so let's move on. An issue that sparked in this game was his ability to deliver deep balls. He missed a bunch of deep balls, including this one super early, where the deep ball was his only read. His target definitely had a step on the DB, but he couldn't get it in front of him. Instead, the pass was thrown a few yards out of bounds, and the receiver had no chance at getting this ball. This deep ball was in the same boat. One read going deep, but this time the receiver was totally locked down. Sanders lets it go at the 30, 
and it gets to the opposite 35 before being deflected. A 35 yard pass, at least vertically. Under throwing deep balls is not particularly favorable, and Sanders did that a lot in this one. But just like the TCU game, one thing did stand out, the poise of Sanders. He's able to stand in the eye of pressure, and he's able to move around in the pocket. I'm not here to say that this Oregon game was completely negative because he did flash some potential in this one. Here's an example of that. While this was a short pass and should have been completed, you can see how he stands strong in the pocket and still delivers the throw on target and on time for a decent gain. As I said, potential was shown, but his performance against Oregon was mediocre in the grand scheme. And then for the last game, I kind of found a middle ground in terms of play. Or should I say, a neutral game to really find out how good Shadur really is. Against a 3-9 Arizona State team, he passed for 239 yards and one touchdown, while also adding a touchdown on the ground. This game was honestly not what I was expecting, and I'm going to say that it's not in a good way. Arizona State was one of the only teams in the Pac-12 last year that were worse than Colorado. And if you're asking me, Shadur did not play like a potential top 10 pick in this matchup. Sure, two touchdowns and no errors in this game might look good on paper, but Shadur made way too many errors that Arizona State just failed to capitalize on. And that can be seen on tape. I'm not going to shut up about the escapability issues, but this game really had that on display. Arizona State got to Shitter four times to sack him, which is around the average amount of times that he went down per game last season. But three of the four times, I felt like he could have avoided the sack in some caliber. I'll show you all four here. Here's the first offensive play of the game. He was too late to sense the pressure, and while this isn't a sack and he got the pass off, he timed that escape wrong and just ran into more pressure. On this sack, I think he had the right idea of where to escape, but obviously he just did it too late as he went down for the sack. This one was pretty bad. Obviously the play call was a screen here, but you actually have to throw the screen. He could have anticipated the running back to get open at least, or you know, led him on with the pass, but instead he just tucks the ball in and lets himself get sacked. And here's the last clip I'll show you. It seems like he almost gets too focused on the route that he just fails to recognize how close the pressure is. I know that's a poise issue too, but come on, you gotta get out of there. And again, I understand that the offensive line probably shouldn't have let the pressure get to him in the first place. But if the pressure gets to him, he needs to make a move. General accuracy and anticipation was also an issue here. On some plays, he was just unable to deliver despite some easier passes. Even on some of the completions, there were ball placement issues and the receiver had to make the play. But this game is not nearly as bad as the Oregon game in terms of positive plays. The potential was shown, and that's kind of what Sanders is living off in my opinion. He's got a lot of concerns, but if he can consistently show these positive plays in 2024, he might actually be a top 10 draft pick like he's projected to be. For example, I thought he used his mobility really well in this game, at least better than the last two games I mentioned. I know he's mobile both in and out of the pocket which is why I am hopeful that he will fix his escape timing because he can definitely leave the pocket efficiently. Shadur had a 16 yard rushing touchdown in this one where he made a great decision to flee the pocket and get it done with his legs. 
he had a pretty clear running lane and was able to use that to his advantage to tie it back up with ASU in the second quarter. And overall, Shadur did a nice job at managing the game and eventually leading Colorado to their fourth and final win of the 2023 season. So we've seen three games of Shadur in this video. We have a solid grasp of what he does well and what he does not do well. So to recap this video, here are a few things to monitor about Shadur as it ties into the 2025 draft. Here's what you should watch for. One. The pocket presence, specifically his timing when escaping the pocket, needs some major work. I had this concern with Caleb Williams as a prospect, but he didn't have it nearly as bad as Shadur does. Shadur took 49 sacks in 2023, an average of 4.45 a game, and so far he's taken 7 sacks through 3 games. It's okay so far, but it still needs to make that jump. Adding on to that escapability, Shadur's mobility in the pocket is actually really good and his poise is up there as well. If he can utilize that mobility more when trying to improve his pocket presence, he could have something brewing. Pocket presence isn't the only issue with his game though. He struggles to identify blitzes consistently, he underthrows deep passes way too often, and his accuracy is inconsistent game by game. But at the same time, 4. The appeal is there because he's great at throwing under pressure, he can squeeze passes into tight gaps, and well, he's been mentored by an NFL legend his entire life. So Sanders has the appeal, but he doesn't quite have the all-around skill set that you would hope for in a guy like him. As we speak, he is my personal QB6 in this draft class, but there's still a lot of room for that to go up. Well, those are my thoughts on Colorado quarterback Shadur Sanders. What do you think of this 2025 NFL Draft prospect? Let me know in the comments section below. Wait, are you not subscribed yet? Well, do it now. I release content like this all the time and would really appreciate your support. I'm Chase Keller from Chase Keller Journalism, and I will see you all next time.